Thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the committee. For the record, I'm Representative Jen Coffey from Merrimack District 6, representing the towns of Andover, Bosco, and Canterbury, Loudon, Northfield, and Salisbury. Many of you are aware I am a licensed emergency medical technician, and I'm also a licensed nursing assistant, and I've worked in the medical field for approximately 17 years. This is one of those rare opportunities that I've had to co-sponsor a bipartisan bill that truly is put out there to help our most vulnerable citizens, those who are sick and those who are dying. It's been mentioned that this bill has been brought up time and again, year after year. And year after year, there's a new reason why it doesn't become law in our state. And year after year, people try again. The bottom line is, the federal <coughs> government doesn't seem to want to change their stance. And maybe, if enough states stand up and say, patients matter. <laughs> that what a doctor thinks is necessary for their patient is what matters. The federal government will stop getting in the way. I've seen in 17 years, I have seen patients suffer. I have seen patients suffer the side effects of medications that we gave them to try and help them feel better. We gave you morphine for your pain and you vomited. We gave you Dilaudid because the morphine didn't work. And you couldn't stay conscious enough, long enough to tell your son or daughter that you love them. People who are in these kind of conditions are simply looking to have some semblance of quality of life. They want to be able to have what time they have with their families to be meaningful. They want to be able to stay awake and talk to you. They don't want to suffer, and God knows no family member wants to watch their loved ones suffer. These are the sickest of the sick. This is not every citizen in New Hampshire. You pass this bill, and the very few will be helped. A limited number. Doctors are not writing prescriptions. They're writing a consent. You're not putting state workers at risk because there aren't big dispensaries somewhere. And let's face it, any way you put a large amount of anything in this world, this is when you have an issue. Why do people rob banks? Because there's a lot of money in there. Why do people rob CVS? Because they know the Oxycontin's in there. People aren't going to know about the individual cancer patient who's home dying and has four little plants. Our law enforcement, our state and local police officers, are to uphold New Hampshire law. They cannot enforce a federal law unless it is stipulated in New Hampshire law. That's been proven in case law. So if our law says that this sick and dying person can have these four plants, our local law enforcement is not going after them. And they have no means or grounds to. And if federal law enforcement have nothing better to do with their day than to go after a cancer patient with four plants, I think we seriously need to reassess what they're doing. Because I'd like to see them stopping terrorists. I'd like to see them stopping major criminals. I don't want them bothering my grandmother down the street who's dying. And I don't think none of us do. And I don't think our local law enforcement even wants to go there. This bill has got to be one of the best things I've ever written, or not written, but read. It's written clearly and concisely to take care of the very sickest of the sick of our society. The people for whom all else medical science isn't working. We've given them this drug or that drug and it didn't work. Many of you know that I recently suffered an injury. One of the medications they gave me for pain caused my body to have a side effect, so they had to give me another medication to take care of that side effect. Then they put me on another medication which made my bladder not function, so they had to take me off of that one. <coughs> By the time all was said and done, I was on two prescription medications to treat what was wrong with me and three to take care of the side effects. Is this bill for me? No. Medical science came up with the solutions to fix my ALS. This is for those that are in the absolute worst place that any human being could ever be 
and God willing and God knowing none of us ever want to be or want to see our loved one be. This is compassion in its truest form. This is our government saying, we have compassion for you, and we believe that your doctor who has that relationship with you, who knows you, who's cared for you, knows what's best for you, and wants nothing more than to see you have some semblance of quality of life. Yes, the federal government hasn't caught up to us yet. What else is new? Welcome to New Hampshire, where guess what? We stood up on Real ID and other states joined us and the federal government finally joined up and said, guess what? I think these states might be on to something. Well, here's a similar situation. Other states are already ahead of us on this. Some have taken it in different directions. What we have in front of us is tailor-made to take care of the absolute most desperate in our state. And perhaps when enough medical providers and enough states stand up and say, you know what, people shouldn't have to suffer. The federal government will pay attention and stop getting in between the doctor and their patient. <coughs> With that, I will close. Thank you, Representative, for your uh, kind words today. Anyone have questions of the representative? Representative LeBron. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just as a point of clarification, I, I have never been so cloudy on an issue in my life. Uh, as far as the amounts that are in the bill, the four plants and the two ounces, can you clear up my mind as to how much that is and what you can do with that? Not being somebody that has <laughs> that, does that. I envision two plants. I think of like, you know, two, you know, pot of plants I have in my house, I guess, as far as, you know, like flowers that we have. I, I know that from what I have learned from those who do deal with these on a greater issue, when there's some that are going to follow me that can probably clarify it better, we're not talking about a lot here. We're not talking about what a quote unquote, somebody with nefarious reasons for wanting to have it is going to be wanting larger amounts. This is its personal use. And from what I've been told from various people, from patients, is these Please do one thing. Put it out of your mind, that thought of some 16-year-old you know, kid with something that looks like a cigarette. This is not what patients do. The average patient either puts it into a food item or they're using it in an inhalation device. If you know anybody with asthma that uses a, uh, a, 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 a nebulizer, it's like it turns it into a water vapor that's easier for them to inhale. They're not sitting there trying to light it up like a cigarette. Most patients in this kind of condition would probably choke to death if they tried to smoke a cigarette. I'd expect they'd have the same result if they tried to, to smoke a marijuana in some kind of a cigarette form. I don't think it amounts to very much at all. It seems to me, I'm sorry, Bella, it seems to me that two ounces of dried leaves, if you buy uh, seasoning and spices and whatnot, comes in a bottle about this big, it's not even a, a fraction of an ounce. And you're talking two ounces of dried leaves here. It, you know, in my mind, I see a, a massive pile of dried leaves. But you're looking at it from the sense of a, a spice you're sprinkling into your into just the top of something. That's in order to have the. Excuse me, forgive me. I'm sure there are others that could maybe answer it better. In order for them to utilize it in the amount to have an effect, what they're boiling down or or however to make this liquid concoction in the um, in the nebulizer or what they're putting into a food substance in order to have enough of the potency takes a little bit more to have that effect if I'm correct. And like I said, not being somebody that's ever used it or you know, like, you know, I've, I've never, God bless it, I'm a cancer survivor and I've never had to be in that situation and to clarify something said earlier, once you survive, you don't have cancer anymore. Um, I think that their amounts are still so minuscule that it's enough for that one patient, but it's never going to be enough for somebody else to really care a lot. <coughs> Just the Thank patient. You. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, I don't know if I'm missing it, but if I was told I had six weeks left to live because I had pancreatic cancer and I wanted my doctor to prescribe me the medical marijuana. Am I given six seeds? How do I get it? Then do I have to grow it? 
be able to use it. The doctor doesn't prescribe. Okay. Um, there's a section in there, I believe it's on section two <coughs> of what you're looking at, that says written right. consent. I mean, it's like when um, the consent. As far as how they would acquire the seeds, I would prefer to defer to someone who has a little bit more knowledge of that. My hope was to kind of bring to you the perspective of somebody who's seen a lot in medical profession and just kind of thinks that government needs to get out from being between the patient and the doc. Thank you very much, Representative, for your testimony. In the interest of time, we have a number of cards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Honorable members of the committee, my name is Matt Simon. For the record, I live in Gosstown and I work as a legislative analyst for the Marijuana Policy Project. I want to be very brief. I want to respect the committee's time. I appreciate all the time you've all spent studying this over the years. And there's a lot I would like to respond to, but I'm going to limit myself as much as possible and try to focus on information that the committee's asked about. Uh, First of all, I have to respond to the word ruse. This is a ruse to legalize marijuana for everybody. I hope, I, I don't know how to even say this because I'm so insulted by the idea. In 2008, we did a poll on this issue, asked New Hampshire residents, do you support allowing seriously ill patients to grow or use medical marijuana? Before we even started doing anything in 2008, that was the poll. 71% of New Hampshire residents support that. 21% of them oppose it. Why should we need to work this hard to pass something that the people of New Hampshire so unanimously support? The only reason that we have to work this hard is because we're arguing with what's now been reduced to a handful of people in the state of New Hampshire. And they happen to be from the law enforcement community. And that, you know, of course their opinions are welcome in this hearing just like anybody else's. But legislators who have sat through testimony in the Senate, they sat through this testimony two and a half hours, all five of them voted for this legislation. That tells me that the people testifying against this don't have their facts straight, or legislators wouldn't be voting the way they are. So, very frustrating. The main objection that I find myself dealing with when I encounter somebody in the community or a, a new opponent who hasn't been to these hearings People have heard about medical marijuana in California. They've seen that there are storefronts in LA. There are hundreds of marijuana dispensaries. There's no regulation. The toothpaste is out of the tube. It is out of the tube in California. They passed a ballot initiative that was this long that the legislature doesn't have the power to amend. There are no regulations. It all fell to the counties. It's a hodgepodge, unregulated, messy policy that nobody, nobody, in their right mind, would want to make policy in New Hampshire. Nobody in the legislature that I know of anyway. So one of the handouts is for that, how SB 409 differs from California's Prop 215, to suggest that we can't learn from the experiences of other states, the good experiences and the bad experiences, identify best practices and make good policy based upon them. I think we can do that. I think that's what we've been doing. I think that's what all of these committees have been doing over the years that have worked on this issue. We have had to change the model, there are two models that have worked in the past. The model of allowing patients to grow their own or designate a caregiver to grow for them. California passed the first state level medical marijuana law in 96. Patients were allowed to grow their own and designate a caregiver. 14 states now allow that. Most of them have put reasonable restrictions on it. Maine has been allowing patients to grow marijuana since 1999. Vermont's been allowing patients to grow marijuana since 2004, and in the whole time I've been debating this issue, Chief Crate lives 11 miles from the Vermont border, and he can't give me one example of the program gone wrong in Vermont. That upsets me, and so I'm obviously expressing that at the moment. I try not to be emotional in these hearings. But I think that we've done everything we can to make this a good bill. And one detail that I wanted to go into details on was the, the two definitions. The Senate committee, as, as Forsyth, Senator Forsyth mentioned, uh, passed one definition, which is a definition that would include 
the patients who need to be included, we feel, and would not open the door to people with, say, chronic back pain or something like that. We want to draw the line so that only real, pa you know, severe patients uh, <clears throat> qualify. I do want to make sure this is the handout that has the four little highlighted words. These are the two types of definitions, just for general understanding. The Senate Committee's version allows either you have one of these conditions or you have one of these symptoms or treatment results. And a lot of the patients that we see have severe pain, whether it's from a degenerative uh, spine condition or whether it's a, a, a rare illness like nail patella syndrome or multiple congenital cartilaginous ecstosis, the two patients I have profiled at the bottom. There are four patients who receive marijuana from the federal government still as part of a program that was grandfathered, that was ended to new applicants in 1991 because of the AIDS crisis. But there are four that still get it. And of those four, two of them would be excluded under the Senate's definition. So I hope we can work with that subcommittee and try to come up with language that includes the people that we do intend to include and not include people we don't intend to include. And that is all I'm going to say. You have to answer any okay. questions. Thank you. Um, there will be a subcommittee probably next Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, I have six cards and supporters.